before uh, Rachel Ackwitz, I'm the installation sculpture professor at Claremont Graduate Art Department. Uh, before I start, I had a nightmare that I did not thank the people that, I, <laughs> that helped me put this on. So thank you to um, Abdul Mazid, thank you to Andrea Breiling, Janelle, Charlie, um, I'm forgetting everyone, uh, and especially to Terry Friedman and to um, Shirley Say. And thank you for the participants. These, these participants are uh, basically superstars and very busy, and they came here for no money uh, to um, talk and, and exchange ideas. So thank you very much. Um, In my last uh, remodel talk, I discussed the space bond inherent with all art and that I teach sculpture at Claremont through an installation course. I spoke about the fact that this is not a new concept and had the Sistine Chapel been broken up into pieces and shown as paintings, we would not have the same relationship to it. By understanding that all art exists within an installation paradigm and is therefore sculpture, Andre Merlot's Museum Without Walls becomes a theoretical work. And Merlot and Walter Benjamin understood that the photograph becomes a stand-in for the object. I, in teaching sculpture, I cannot focus on one technique because every medium, material, and process has the potential to be, to be sculptural. It is my position as an academic that all art is sculpture, and much of the excitement and allure that we experience from viewing art comes from the sculptural perspective. In the exhibition, which I hope you all go see, in the exhibition uh, that accompanies the symposium, my work appears to be a painting with production shots. The red pigment might look like an abstract expressionist painting, but on closer examination, of the photographs, one comes to understand that the material is lipstick. I am emphasizing that there are multiple locations the work is activated in, the gallery space, the place of its making, and the virtual space of the photographs. In the case of Jackson Pollock and Gordon Matta Clark, we are unable to separate the act of making from the work itself. Clement Greenberg used Jackson Pollock to put forth his ideas about the purification of form and the flattening of painting. The posi his position also ignores that Jackson Pollock, uh, uh, Pollock's works also uh, existed as performance, with the painting operating as document. Greenberg denied the three-dimensionality of the painting itself. Gordon Matta Clark avoids this, on the other hand, by referring to both the presence and the absence in his work. Uh, Andre Merlot's future becomes a reality where we know works of art and artists through images. I'm a fan of both of these two artists and have only seen a few of their works in person, but I know much of their history through digital reproductions. Both these images are obvious examples of sculpture, but they are also great examples of the inverse document, making mass of physical space, so that the space that we so rarely see and acknowledge. Our relationship between space and scale has dramatically uh, altered in recent times. We are now able to view the smallest particles and the furthest galaxies with amazing clarity. While researching pigment particles, I have found that they are incredibly uh, uh, three-dimensional in shape. What we are looking at here is a synthetic pigment particle under electron microscope. It, it, shows, an ink, it set, shows ink jet pigment as parts within parts, shapes on top of shapes, forming spheres. They call it a super ball. It works under a process of self-assembly. What we perceive immediately as flat, liquid, or painted ultimately are dynamic shapes. Through my own work, I've become an accidental chemist. I've learned that under compression, certain colors operate differently, and stronger, a stronger bond and adhesion happens when the shapes are not rounded in form. Some call my eyeshadow works paintings, but I assert that they are in fact sculpture. 
Each contains pigment particles compressed with cosmetic oils and asserts a sculptural mass. By examining everything as sculpture, it opens up and expands the conversation. In this work by Kathy Opie, blood platelets act like pigment. They have been released through a carving, which has, a photo has been offered back as a photographic conceptual document. The digital revolution offers the idea that everything physical is computable and contains bits of information. The materials we use in art do the same thing. They are collections of bits of information that create a whole, and it is this delivered meaning that gives art its value. Sculpture deals with objects through their ideas and their conceptual framework. Every aspect of an art object contains information. When we talk about all art, including painting, as something physical, we are allowing for more information to enter the dialogue and expand our perspectives. It is new perspectives that will bring the radical change we need within ourselves, our institutions, and our cultures. Thank you very much.